pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you for this day, Lord, and I just thank you uh, for your blessings uh, on the community, Lord, and I just uh, ask that you bless this meeting tonight, Lord. I ask that you uh, give us wisdom and discernment, Lord, and decisions that we make. Lord, I just ask that um, you continue your blessings on our community, Lord, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Item three, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes? Yes, Mayor, we have one change to add item 7C, which is consider approval of an amendment to the engineering contract for the East Spring Street Multimodal Access Grant Project. Thank you. There the Okay. Is there a motion on the agenda of the amended agenda? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion? All vote. Right. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. At this time, I would like to recognize some guests that we have here. We've got Boy Scout Troop 196. Thank you all for coming tonight. We've actually got something to present to y'all if y'all want to come up, but um, anyone of the council like to address our guests? Thank you guys for being here. We're excited to have you at our council meeting. I, uh, I, th I think I know most of y'all. and excited to see y'all here. Proud to uh, know where you where you uh, meet and assemble and I uh, want to just compliment y'all for doing what you're doing. Yeah, I'll make a quick comment. Uh, one of our scout, or multiple scouts are working on a bear badge called communications. And one of the requirements is to attend a public meeting and look at different viewpoints and uh, then report back to the counselor. So we got multiple purposes for being here tonight. I'm Bob Mack, committee member, and Steve Lenny, committee member of 2496 at Jefferson Avenue Church Pride. Thank you all for being here. If you want to come up here real fast, we've actually got something to present to y'all. Yes. We have a so, so. Oh, yeah, I heard. Yeah. I, mean, I told you. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Good to see you. All right. Thanks again for coming, guys. Item 5A, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on February 2nd, 2023. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Walker, seconded by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On the consent agenda, 6A, consider awarding bid for... Switch gears and metering bay. 6B, considering awarding bid for 500 CU primary cable. 6C, considering awarding bids for LED lights. And 6D, consider awarding bid for 40 X URD wire. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move to approve. That's right. Motion made by Councilman Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. 7A, hold a public hearing on the annual progress report and the plans of service for the following annexation areas. Old Bridge Road, Falling Water River area, Buck Mountain Road, Dry Valley Road area, East Highway and 70 North, Interstate 40 area, West Cookville, Interstate area, Shagrad Road, Shagrad Road area, Rebecca Place, Bunker Hill Road area, Bunker Hill Love Road, Love Lady area, Free Hill Road, North Washington Avenue area, South Willow Avenue area, Bennett Road Extension area, Old Stewart Road area, Hall Bennett Road area, and Mackey Road area. Mr. Ward. Thank you, Mayor and Council members. Since 1998, municipalities have been required to prepare and publish an annual report and hold a public hearing on the progress of implementing plans of services for annexation areas until the plans of services are fully implemented. The city of Cookville has annexed 22 areas requiring annual reports. Prior to 2016, the plans of services have been fully implemented for nine of these areas. The locations of the 13 areas for which services specified in the plans of services remain to be completed are depicted on the screen. 
A comprehensive annual report for these annexation areas was recently published in the Herald Citizen. The report provides as follows. Sanitary sewer service is the only service remaining to be provided in the Old Bridge Road Falling Water River area. The plans of, plan of services specifies sanitary sewer will be provided based on the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sanitary sewer service in the unserved portions of the present corporate limits. Construction of sanitary sewer improvements for part of this area, 111 parcels, was completed in 2015. In 2018, sewer service was extended to nine parcels on Boyd Ferris Road. Approximately 63 parcels remain without sewer service in, the, in this area. All services have been provided in the Buck Mountain Road, Dry Valley, Dry Valley Road area with the exception of sewer. The plans of services specify sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine uh, expansion of sanitary sewer service in unserved portions of the city. The Department of Water Quality Control has a sanitary sewer construction project under contract that will provide sewer service to 26 parcels that should be completed in the spring of 2023. The East Highway 70 North I-40 area, all services have been provided with the exception of sewer. Uh, the plan specifies that sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine expansion of sewer in unserved portions of the present corporate limits. Two phases of public sewer installation have been completed, serving approximately 165 parcels. In 2022, a sewer project provided sanitary sewer service to seven parcels along Highway 70. All, sewer, all services in the West Cookville I-40 area, with the exception of sewer, street lighting, and electric service uh, are complete. The plan specified sewer would be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies to determine expansion of sewer in the unserved portions of the city. Street lighting and electric service would were to be provided within one year of the city acquiring the service area. Electric service and street lighting um, have been provided to approximately 98% of this service area. The, the Cookville Electric Department continues to work with UCEMC to complete electric service within the area. The installation of gas, uh, electric gas, water, and sewer in the Highlands Business Park was completed in 2012-2013. All of the water customers in this area that were served by Double Springs Utility <coughs> became City of Cookville customers in November of 2021. South of I-40, all water customers have been acquired and now receive water from the city of Cookville. The, uh, the city serves all water customers in this annex area, annexed area now. An engineering contract has been approved to design the replacement of the water line along, the replacement of the water line along Mine Lake Creek Road and on several uh, streets off Mine Lake Creek Road to improve fire protection in the area. This job is expected to bid in the spring of 2023. Construction has begun to extend sewer from I-40 through parts of Park West subdivision and to parcels near the I-40 inter interchange, serving 35 parcels in this area. All, sewer, all services have been provided to the Shag Rag Road area, with the exception of sewer. The plan specifies that sanitary sewer would be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer in the unserved portion of the city limits. A construction contract has been awarded to provide sanitary sewer to 22 parcels in this area. This will leave five parcels without sanitary sewer service. The Rebecca Place, Bunker Hill Road area, all services have been provided except sewer. The plan specified sewer would be provided within 20 years of the effective date of annexation. And sewer has been provided to two customers thus far. The Bunker Hill Lo Road, Lovelady Road area, uh, all services have been provided with the, with the exception of sewer. That plan also specified sewer would be provided within 20 years of the effective date of annexation. A sewer construction cost share agreement was approved and should be completed in 2023, which will provide sewer access to 20 parcels in this area, as well as a new residential subdivision under development. The Freehill Road area, all services have been provided with, with the exception of sanitary sewer. The plan specified that sewer would be provided within 25 years after the effective date of annexation. All services have been provided to the South Willow Avenue area as specified in the plan of the services with the exception of sanitary sewer service. The plan specified that sanitary sewer would be provided uh, based on the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine expansion of sewer in the unserved portions of the present corporate limits. Sewer has been provided to two more parcels for a total of 15 parcels in this annexation area. The Bennett Road Extension area. All services have been provided as specified with the exception of sewer. The plan specified sewer would be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer service in the unserved portion of the present corporate limits. A sanitary sewer line under I-40, which is, was, which is required to provide service north of the interstate, was completed in 2016. 
In 2018, a low-pressure sewer system was installed, which provided service to 79 tracks along Highway 70 and adjacent roads. An engineering contract has been approved to design um, sewer improvements starting at I-40 and going to the north and west, which will serve some of the area. Construction has begun on this project, which will serve two parcels along Tennessee Avenue. In 2022, a sanitary sewer extension provided service to two parcels along Highway 70 and Locust Grove Road. For the Old Stewart Road area, all services have been provided except sewer. The plan specified sewer would be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer in the unserved portion of the city limits. As part of the I-40 interchange project, a sewer line was installed along Tennessee Avenue, uh, formerly Bennett Road, serving five, five parcels and eliminating a pump station that served Academy Sports. A sanitary sewer extension was completed in 2022, which leaves only three parcels, which uh, one is the city of Cookville and an, an Academy Sports out parcel without sewer in this area. For the Hall Bennett Road area, all services have been provided as specified in the plan of services. Sewer was extended to this area by the construction of the FedEx facility, so that area will uh, go into the completed uh, stack for next year. And lastly, the Mackey Farm area, all services have been provided uh, in the plan except for sewer service, uh, sanitary sewer service and street lights. The plan specified that improvements to provide fire hydrants necessary for fire protection in the area would be completed within five years after the effective date of annexation. Two fire hydrants were installed in this area in 2022, which satisfies the fire protection requirement. The plan of service specified that sanitary sewer will be provided when economically feasible and based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine expansion of sewer in the unserved portion of the present corporate limits. Cookville Electric Department is continuing to work with UC EMC for the completion and installation of street lighting. Well, that concludes the report on the annexation areas. I'm happy to answer any questions the council has. Thank you, Mr. Ward. At this time, we'll open the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you would, uh, yeah, step up to the podium over there, and if you'll tell us your name, if you want to say what area you live in, uh, limit comments to three minutes. When you hear the timer go off, just wrap it up. Hi, uh, Peter Gabriel, uh, lifetime Cookville resident. Um, what is the criteria and the policies of implementing the new uh, sewer system? Um, I heard him say it's based on the needs or based on the criteria and standards policy. Um, what is that? Oh, so yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, we look at the septic tank failure rate. Um, also, depending on if it's a sort of commercial area, we try to work something out with the developer. It's you know if we can do some cost share or something like that. Um, but normally it's what's the failure rate and how many people's asking for sewer. Okay, we, we've had a family business right off exit 290 for uh, 30, 40 years. Um, you know, we were annexed in 2001, we've been waiting 22 years. Why is it that that Tennessee Avenue is already getting it and we've been waiting so long and we still haven't got it? I mean. We have a, we had a hotel and there's a restaurant. The the Tennessee Avenue is one of those, like I mentioned, where the developer we're doing the city's doing a cost share agreement where developers paying fifty percent of that cost to extend the sewer. Okay. Uh, is there any chance we can get something um, in the uh, in the forecast for us? Um, you're at the Highway 70. Is that? I, don't know where they are. Yeah, I think I think out there. I can't think of the name. East of the Highway 70. So. Yeah, that's where I thought you were. It was Alpine Lodge and Suites and uh, the yes. restaurant the there, restaurant. Mexican restaurant. Southside. Oops, Southside. Southside. Yeah. Southside. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The hotel there, and I uh, can't think yeah. of what what it used to be called. But anyway, yes, we've looked at that area. Uh, it's pretty high cost to get to that. We would. Our plan right now would be to, the way to get sewer to that would be run south of the interstate all the way back to um, the 111 exit. So it's a pretty good area through there getting right away and the lines through there. But um, I know, Mr. Hunt, would you be available to discuss um, after this meeting or at another time so that I, if you have any more questions? Not really. I just don't want us to be forgotten about. Yeah. No. 
Your mom's here every year. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but thank you for coming to speak. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah. No, thank you. Have a good evening. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, hello, Council. My name is Matt Davidson. I live at 809 Manning Place here in Cookville. Um, if several of you were on the formal uh, council, the previous council, and, and will remember me from that council when we brought this piece of property, um, I'm a partner in the uh, in the quarry there across from Outdoor Junction called UC Materials RQ Development. We also own some parcels on uh, Salem Road, which is in the same vicinity that uh, he was talking about. And um, we came three years ago and talked about our long-term plan of of taking this down uh, and and having a, a forty acre forty acre commercial development right here, um, you know this this property's been paying city um, property taxes for the last four years. We've been paying city sales tax. Um, we run a commercial business that we we function out of Port of, Port of Johns right now, so uh, we don't have suitable soil for a septic system. Um, where the, our site's been so disturbed, um, there's just no way to get any septic on that. Um, it's going to be hard to, you know, we've got an untapped interchange there, especially on the north side. It's hard to bring development to that when you're talking about such a high cost. And and we feel like as a property owner and as a pe looking at it from a piece of property that's been there 22 years, got annexed 22 years ago, and been paying all these services to this to the city, and we feel like nothing's been done to to get anything closer to that. And I understand you have to have some someone there to help cost share it, or somebody there to to help push push that project along. But it's been 22 years, and and like he said, you know, Tennessee Avenue kind of jumped the. It, it felt like every, everything jumped this piece of property, and so there's an interchange there that can be tapped. And and could be a huge asset for the city of Cookville, and uh, I know there's more than just me. Um, we own, like I said, three parcels in that area that could really capitalize if sewer was in that area. And we're willing to cost share if we get it close. But I mean, we can't cost share if it's five million dollars or you know. I mean, so it's got to be feasible. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I'm Monty Johnson. I own two pieces of property in the same area. I was, the last time I was at a city council meeting was 22 years ago. <laughs> Didn't want to be put in then. But anyway, I, I do have a question. I noticed that some of them were, were promised city sewer services within 20 years. We weren't promised anything. What, how, how does that work? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, plan services were drafted based on the input of the city attorney's at that time. They were written in compliance with the city attorney's file. That's why. They knew somebody. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's not hardly playing fair to everybody else. They they were promised something within 20 years. We've been in, oh, just like they said, 22 years, and it doesn't look good yet. Donnie Meadows is up the road. He, I know he's the only reason it got out to where it's at, is that development right there. You had a couple of calls here in about seven, you get some of Yeah. Uh, but, uh, on that. Okay, now, as far as... Uh, now, I have one commercial building there, and I, I lease out. To, uh, I've got to have somebody that don't stay in the building because the septic system won't take it. Well, then, yeah. one part needs to know that because that one of the big criteria is based on if you have septic failures, then that's the impetus for us to get sooner. Yeah. Oh, very solid. Come up here, studying design. Well, I okay. When I haven't told anybody that, but I mean, it, you know, I mean, I, I know. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here tonight. I'll discuss this with Barry and we'll see what we can do. If there are some type of areas that is a place of the priority to get sewer design and sewer installed. Is that not correct, Barry? Yes, sir, that's correct. So, thank you for letting us know. We'll, we'll be looking at that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm Ralph Mullins. I live at 903 South Dry Valley Road, uh, down the road from Matt and Monty. Um, I live about a mile from the sewer pump station. 
Um, and we ran X 22 years ago, and we were promised to her within 20 years. Um, and I didn't hear any plans at all tonight about connecting from the sewer station all the way up to Monterey Highways, Highway 70. Could somebody address that, please? <clears throat> Mary, well, I mean, that's, that's a new question. <laughs> well, no, I, think, I think he was asking the definition of the plan of service. I think you said it was promised 20 years ago, but it's it's not in the plan of services. No, there is no time limit in the plan of services for that annexation area. For... It was not in the writing, but it was promised to all of us well, before we got annexed. There were three areas that have had specific timelines prescribed, two 20-year timelines and one 25-year timeline, and the rest were with the language that I presented to you guys tonight. That's how the plans of services reads for the for the extension of sewer service. Well, we can deal with 25 years. Yeah, because 2001. Yeah, because that, that area, like I say, is not in the plan of services, so we haven't looked at it as far as a timeline. Um well, we've looked at it on how to do how to serve all these areas that's being discussed. Well, we've been notified now that there's such a time value, so we'll uh, have some more discussion. Next design, design, get the clear out there and say, hey, you know, cover the call, bring that back to the county. Everybody needs to realize once you have sewer available out there, a lot of there you will be paying the minimum sewer, whether it's towels or not. Okay. That's one of the reasons too. We also don't want to stay busy. We don't make priorities to extend sewer and newer subdivisions because people aren't going to tie on the sewer lines. But it doesn't make sense. So I think that's again, that's why uh, and all of them we do then is get complaints about people having their sewer bill when they're not tied up because they don't tie on the system. But uh, so if we've got sewer, if we have subject matter abilities, we need to look at this very well. If have got a priority. Service in this area. Anyone else would like to speak? Okay. My name is Martina Gabriel, and you know, I sold Alpine Lodge, which is now Baymont Inn and Suites, and then I sold Fiesta Cancun, and it's Fiesta Cancun on the hill now. But I sold it with the condition the minute that city sewer comes that they have to hook up. So that is my stipulation so I can get all my land back because all, this, all the sewer systems are in my land. And so I was just hoping that at least we get some sort of a timeline that we know we are not forgotten. Well, all your fill lines for your septic system that's are on your property. Right? Yes, uh huh. They and they would have to animals. hook up no matter what. Mm -hmm. I but just wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have a discussion. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Mark Brady. Uh, I have 13 acres across from Dr. Mullins. Um, I probably only 12 years. My problems probably tell in comparison to these, but would love to see Sue right there. So thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Okay. At this time, we'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there a motion? 170. So moved. Motion favor, Councilman Gilbert. Is there a second? Second. Okay. And we it sounds like we've got some discussion. So yeah, go ahead. I'll go first. Um you know, second term on the council, we're still dealing with the same areas. Um, when I look at this report, what I see is that these early areas where we are hearing the complaints tonight from our property owners, um, they did, were not given a legal deadline of 20 years or 25 years to get these sewer services completed. However, they are the oldest properties, the first to be annexed. And so I don't see why they should be disserviced because annexation hadn't reached that point where this requirement was being made legally at that time. So, you know, if we could move towards that, or at least it, within, I'd like to see in my council term, in this term, see a deadline set for these properties, see the ability for us to tell these people when they can expect it at the very least. 
Um, I think that's something that we should owe to the communities. For, for, all, for all of them. Yeah, for all of them. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and maybe with the priority given yeah. to who's been waiting the longest. Mm -hmm. I'll say specifically, it's a little disconcerting that we have a hotel on a septic system. That does not sound like you want that to wait for failure. Mm -hmm. That just sounds like that needs attention. So I, I'm first time councilman. So uh, I don't want to speak for these guys, but, I, but, I, but I've been around long enough to know this is a this is an infrastructure sensitive council. Uh, I don't know that everybody will get everything that they always want, but at the same time, we are we are wired that way. So, and, and I want to thank everybody for coming. Bye. I just want to echo what these two um, said. I, I do think that we owe it uh, to you to have a deadline for sure. Yeah, and I'll say, you know, four years ago, all those years we've heard y'all, and and clearly we need to we need to do do better and see what we can do to to at least, like I said, give give y'all a plan, give you something that you can you can work with. So I think the council, this council definitely has heard y'all and I um, want to see if we can do something for y'all. Yeah. And we've discussed this prior. We've discussed this before. So in hearing all these right here, we will most definitely, and as he said, we are pretty sensitive to this infrastructure. So we will most definitely look into this. Anything else? Okay. We'll take a vote. <clears throat> All those correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. 7B, consider approval of copier lease contract with RJ Young Company, Metro Nashville Public School bid price for all city departments. Mr. Coons. Mayor and Council, um, our current five year full service copier lease contract with RJ Young uh, was executed in 2018 and expires uh, at the end of this month. Our current contract utilizes the 2018 Metro Nashville public schools bid pricing. The 2018 Metro Nashville public schools bid pricing is still in effect, and our dam will allow us to execute a new five-year full-service copier lease contract utilizing that same 2018 bid pricing. As we've all seen with so many items that have come before this council in the last couple of years, pricing on almost everything has gone up. To be able to execute a new five-year contract at 2018 pricing levels is a unique opportunity. Um, our full service lease contract pricing would include the units, parts, labor, and toner. The city would buy paper and supplies. New units can be added as needed without extending the term of the contract. The base lease price for 31 units will be $1,893.81 per month. In addition to the base lease, we will be charged per printer copy that goes through the units. 0.48 cents for black and white copies and 4.8 cents for color copies. I respectfully request your approval for a new five-year full-service copy release contract with RJ Young Company, utilizing 2018 Metro Nashville Public Schools bid pricing for all city departments. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second, second by Councilman Walker. Any discussion? All vote. All those correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. 7C, consider approval of amendments to the engineering contract for the multimodal access grant project on East Spring Street. Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, we're requesting to allow the city to enter in, into an agreement with Reagan Smith and Associates for construction plans revisions for the East Spring Street multimodal sidewalk project. Um, <coughs> Uh, the changes are required to approximately 650 feet of the project in order to move the proposed cut slopes into an existing uh, into an existing ground that's outside of an existing development that was constructed since a project was initially uh, surveyed in 2016. Um, the area that we're talking about here, I don't know if you can see well enough on the plans, is um, the new down north area. You can see how the sidewalk is off of the uh, the proposed right of way, and also go to the next. You can see here on the very edge of this one, 
you see the curb and gutter in that section. This is going to be more of what's going to go on. It's going to be a, a curb and gutter that's already poured that you see out there now, a three-foot grass strip, and then a five-foot sidewalk immediately behind that three-foot grass strip. We're going to carry that on to the uh, the east uh, to tie into the bottom of that uh, the bottom of that. Uh, that slope where there is uh, some existing drainage right now. Um, this uh, I'd also like to mention that any easement needed for this was uh, was donated. So when we move this off the easement, we're not losing any uh, easement that we've uh, paid for for this section. Um, and I respectfully uh, request allowance to enter this to uh, enter to th into this agreement and uh, uh, answer any questions. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Gilbert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? Who was kind enough to donate the easement? Jerry Gall. And tell him thank you. Thank you for it. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Any delay? Any delays associated with any of the completion date? Just so folks in the area know kind of what to expect. Yeah. Uh, the completion date is a separate May. Okay. So uh, this would uh, set us back. I'd imagine we'll ask for a change order for the delay in this. We'd set it back, uh, could set it back another month. Uh, and I'll, I can follow up with you on that. But it should be over this summer. Yes. Huh. Don't, 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 don't want us to do that. It's the eighth year of this project, so I'm going to give you a little bit. is when it was initiated. Yeah, so. Our cup's half full. <laughs> Three councils, is that right? I'm finished on this one. That's what we're going to do. Any other discussion? Okay. All vote. Right. Oh, that's great. Five yes, here. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, this concludes the agenda portion of our meeting. Uh, do we have anyone who would like to speak on non-agenda items to the council? Okay. Seeing none, I will go ahead and close that portion. We've got uh, item 9A, receive the city's financial report, 7-1-22 through 12-31-22. Ms. Emily. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the budget to actuals for all the funds have been presented to you in your packet. So I'm just gonna highlight a few of the funds for you this evening. Then we're gonna jump right into the general fund. Um, general fund revenues are at 52% of budget at December 31st. The largest revenue stream is our local tax line there. You can see that's 49% of budget. Um, slight lag in that is typical for six months and that's because of the timing of some tax collections, particularly property tax and business tax comes in in the spring. Um, the other revenue line item there is at 105% of budget. Um, that line includes sale of assets and interest earnings, and we had closed on a large property sale um, earlier in the fiscal year, driving that percentage. And also the interest we earned on our deposits have already exceeded 100% of what we budgeted. The Fed has raised interest rate five times between July 1st and December 31st. And as of the end of December, we're earning 4.55% on our deposits at the bank. Um, Fines, forfeitures, and penalties, you can see there, are only at 36% um, of budget. That category has been trending down. Um, and actually, if you compare it to the same six-month period last year, the collections are down about $20,000 compared to what we did last year. So changing to a new software for our court system is drastically going to improve the collections there, give us the ability to do some collections and send out reminders for court and that kind of thing. So. Jumping onto the operating revenue side, um, total operating set revenues or expenditures are at 45% of budget. You can see there, all the departments are well within budget on a whole. One line item that may require budget amendment towards the end of the year for most departments is fuel cost. Some departments are tracking well above 50% of, of budget for their fuel cost at mid year. Public works is right at 50% there of budget. And that, again, is because of fuel costs, and also they had a significant repair of a backhoe that's in their repair and maintenance of equipment that's driving that um, percentage there. Codes is only 37% of their budget, and that is due to the restructuring of the staff there. If you recall, we've actually combined the codes in the planning department now into a community development department. So in next year's budget, you'll see that change there, but we left everything as it is for this year's budget. Um, capital, we actually budgeted over $3 million in capital purchases in this year budget. That's a timing, um, not any typical trends there, but 
as of December 31st, we had only spent 700 and or, so about 750,000 of that budget. We've got a lot of equipment, trucks that are still in order. We're just waiting for delivery. Um, we had some projects budgeted, the renovations of the fire station. They just got started on that in January. Um, in leisure services, we have the LPRF grant that's getting, you know, moving forward at a slow pace. They haven't started really anything in there. So, so that's that. That's the general fund. And overall, strong revenues and expenditures are well within their operating budgets. So. Um, a snapshot of our two largest revenue streams are sales tax. Um, local option sales tax actually represents 52% of our revenue in our general fund. So for the six month period, we have collected 53.7% of our budget already. Um, we budgeted 17.4 million, you can see there, and we've collected 9.3 million. So growth remains strong there in the local option sales tax. The other um, large revenue stream is property taxes. Again, nobody starts, um, property taxes start being paid in October and they're due by February 28th. If you hadn't paid your property taxes, you've got till the end of the month. Um, and you can see the collections for the 2022 property taxes are at 43% of the aggregate and right on track with last year. And we collect a big portion of that just in the month of February. So all the trends there are tracking as typical. Um, we typically collect about 96.5% of the aggregate in the first year. So moving on to the debt service fund, our revenues are at 55.4% of budget. The largest revenue stream there is the local option sales tax. And just like our other sales tax, um, we are at 52.3% of local of the state share. This is state shared sales tax. So um, we've collected 2,022,000 there compared to last year at 1.865. The other revenue there I'll point out is we put the in lieu of tax from the hospital into this fund and it's at 50%. We bill them monthly for that. Um, expenditures are not very high because we make principal payments on our bonds on June 1st. So you just got the interest that we paid in December. Um, a recap of our, our debt outstanding, general obligation debt outstanding. We started this fiscal year with four bonds outstanding for a total of 24,185. The only activity in that six month period is we issued new bonds. The 2022 general obligation bonds were issued in December for an amount of $9,650,000. The primary purpose was for the street projects and also um, we used it to purchase land for the aquatics facility or possible aquatic facilities part down off of 111. So our total debt outstanding at December 31st was 33835000 um, the employee insurance fund, this is one fund that we've talked to you a lot about that we've had some concerns about. Um, we started the fiscal year with a little over $2 million in reserves in this fund. Um, revenues collected are at 53%. Um, that includes the premiums from the employees in the city that go into that fund. Um, if you recall, council approved when we did the budget that the city cover the administrative costs. So in addition to the premiums that we paid for that six month period, we paid an additional amount to cover the administrative costs. And then um, we also did a transfer of ARPA funds from the general fund. Um, and you can see claims continue to be the story here. Um, claims are at 62.5% of budget already. We've had some significant claims that have come through in this six month period. Typically at the end of the year, claims are higher than the first part of the year because people have hit their deductibles and they go out and they have some procedures done. So um, we're seeing that trend there. As, in the, as of December 31st, we already have four claimants that exceeded our stop loss um, deductible of $175,000. Um, we did make significant changes to the plan. Effective January 1st, we increased premiums substantially. Um, we added the diabetes program and we also added the Medicare Advantage program for our retirees 65 and over. So they've actually been moved off our plan, but it's too early to tell yet, you know, till we see if that's going to benefit us in the, the going forward. Um, but we're hoping so. So if you look at claims here, you can see fiscal year 21 and 22 is when they really skyrocketed. And so far, just for the six month period, we're looking at four, almost four and a half million dollars. So hopefully the changes we made in January slow down the claims for the next six months and 
Um, we've got meetings later this or in March. We're meeting with our Blue Cross Blue Shield representative to review claims and come up with strategies for going forward and also me working with our brokers. We're constantly looking at what we can do to try to control, control cost here. So. And our utility departments, um, everything's as expected here. The electric department operating revenues are at 56.97% of budget. Um, operating expenses at 55%. Um, everything's going as expected there. Um, water department revenues are at 52.06% of budget. And their expenditures are at 50% of budget. They have some other projects going on there. Their ever re other revenue you can see we budgeted. $14 million, that includes the SRF loan. We've got started on the water um, plan expansion project. We did have one draw by December 31st on that loan. And we've also budgeted the um, TDEC grant. We have not gotten any of that money yet, but that's in part of that big project too. So um, gas department, their operating revenues are 39% of budget. That is typical. Their revenue trends to come more in January, February, March. Um, so that's kind of typical and on track there, and their operating expenses are at 51%. So that's a summary of our utilities, nothing unusual or unexpected there. And again, the only fund that really we've got concerns about is the health insurance fund, and we're going to keep a close eye on it. But everything's in as expected. So I'd be happy to answer any question, but recommend your acceptance of our financial report. Thank you. Remind me, we need a motion and a second to... Receive this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So is there a motion? Move to accept the financial report. Second. Motion made by Councilman Walker, seconded by Councilman Baji. Any discussion? No. Okay. Thank you for all voting. Thank you. All that was great. Five yes, motion yes. Thank you. Any comments from the council? At the end of the meeting? Anyone? Okay. Do you have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. There you go. Motion to adjourn is seconded. Please adjourn.